fact it's called a Goku Menace, I can think of a few jokes out of it. I can think of a Spider-Man joke, a SpongeBob joke, or that one menacing like thing from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I don't know, maybe you guys can come up with something funny. Going guys, it is Plastic Disaster back with another review, and today we're gonna take a look at the Gogu Menace, the anime movie Gundam Sea Freedom. Yes, I've seen the movie, and uh, what I think how Luminaria Hawk did in the movie, I think she was pretty cool with it. But let's not get into spoilers because we're here to talk about the kit, right? Take a look at the box art. We see the Gogu Menace, you know, flying in the sky, shooting while we have explosions going on in the background. Have you guys seen the movie? Well, this is basically act two. If you look at this side of the box, we see the Gogu Mess in a nice kneeling shooting pose and also shows off the uh, articulation. And right over here, we have more action poses. Moving on to this side of the box, we see the front and rear shot of the kit. And here's what it looks like when it's unpainted. So after cracking over the box, we have five bags of letters and a manual. Looking at the cover of the manual, we see a familiar pose. Moving on down, we got some information of what the mobile suit looks like in the anime. And moving on, on to this side, we got the pilot herself, Lunaria Hawk. Taking up in the middle of the manual, it looks like we're going to be using all the, well, almost all the parts. Okay, so normally I don't go in depth on the manual, but this is like really neat. Um, when you're like putting this kit together, it gives you what runners you need to put up like a head or a body and etc. And moving on to the back of the manual, it's just the same old stuff except for this pose. And moving on down, you get a color guide you're planning on painting it. Starting off with runner A, is going to be a multi-colored runner. We got a big chunk of gray, nice shade of blue right here, and a very, very light blue. B is going to be another multi-colored runner. We got a big chunk of dark red, gray, white, and black. We got runners C1 and C2. They're both going to be sharing this chunk of runner, but the only difference are the uh, end parts of the left and the right side. Runners D1 and D2, like runner C, they're going to be sharing this chunk of runner. Runner D is going to be this part, and runner D1 is going to be this part. Runner E1 for the dark red and runner E2 for the gray parts. Runner F1 is going to be the white parts, while you have runner F2 is going to be the beam halberd parts. We have two runner Gs, the dark blue parts. Runner H1 is going to be the light purple parts, while you have runner H2 is going to be the clear blue parts. We got a polycap runner, which is only going to be a bunch of ball joints. And finally, okay, get ready for this. Big ol' sticker sheet. Okay, so. I know this may turn some people away. The real question is, does this big sticker sheet stop it from being a good kit? Let's find out. This could be it for the unboxing portion. Now, so far I am kind of intrigued on how this kit will be put together. Like, what I'm saying is like how the out-of-box out of presentation will look without the stickers. But hey, what really matters is that how did Bandai engineer this kit? So I'm going to put this together right now and I'll see you guys right after. And here's the Goku Menace all put together and I gotta say putting this kit together is quite a blast and remember what I said about the uh, polycap uh, being about the ball joints well you're gonna be using only two to answer the big question I had earlier does it look okay without the stickers well you can kind of get away with it even if I did apply the stickers it's gonna look okay at best but the problem is is that the stickers peel off over time and speaking of stickers, let's go over them because there is quite a lot. So starting off with this one that is going to go onto the bottom white. These light purple and black stickers are going to go onto this little light piece on the side skirts, one on each side. And these stickers are going to go onto the thrusters on the side of the legs, one on each side, so two per leg. This tiny blue little sticker right here is going to go onto the scope of the gun. And this big red sticker, they wrap around on the scope of this beam rifle. Okay, buckle up because the most of the stickers are going to the backpack. So uh, let's uh, get through this. So 
just to get the big one out of the way, these two, they go up to the uh, ends or the edge of the wings. These two white stickers, they're gonna go on to these wings, the top part. These tiny little red stickers, they go on to these little like little pods right there. Make sure you pay attention what goes where. All right, and so these two little white stickers, they go on to the tip of this gun. Make sure you pay attention what goes where. And this sticker right here, this wraps around this little part right here. And these blue stickers, they go onto these little wings right here. Pay attention which side goes where. And I forgot this little sticker right here goes onto the bottom part of the gun right here. Whew, well, that was fun. So moving on to seam lines. Well, they're pretty much hidden anyways as a uh, detail or a panel line. So that's gonna be it for the out of box presentation. Overall, it is a really nice uh, presentation. The engineer was actually pretty great though again it is a little lacking because like the uh, stickers and uh, effort you have to put into uh, painting and speaking of painting i will work on this kit and i'll see you guys right after i will try to do my best it may not be perfect so bear with me all right and after all that effort here is what the goku menace looks like and doing some detailed work on this kit um on the kit itself like just the body it's not that bad but on the wings, yeah, that's a that's a big pain. But hey, on the bright side, there are some other kits that will give you a headache. All right, so moving on with accessories, starting off with Hannah options. Well, all you get is just the uh, weapon holding hand. And next up, you have a beam rifle. You got this helm that can swing side to side. And you might be wondering, hey, what's this rectangle hole for? Well, actually, I met the other one. It's for you to attach this adapter piece and you can store it onto the back skirt right here but you only get one of these so moving on to another gun you get the big old rail gun and that secondary handle can move in and out and like the previous beam rifle put this adapter in plug in side skirt it stores except you have the shield now right now i put it in active mode now if you want to put it in active mode you just pull these apart switch it around like this these two effect parts come into play. So of course the big one goes onto the big one and the small one goes onto the small one. Should look like It should look something like this. And you can plug this right here on the forearm. And by the way, this is on a ball joint. And so you can just, you know, wiggle around and rotate it. Except you have two of the beam halberd handles. You got the inactive version, which explains the little hole right there. And you have the active version. This is where these two come into play. And to store the inactive version, you don't store it there. You store it right up there. You see this tiny little tap up there? That's where you store it. And finally, moving on to the backpack. Say it with me, the backpack is an accessory as well. Okay, so onto the backpack, you do get quite a lot of movement, which makes it pretty interesting. So if I lift this middle piece up, this moves up as well but you can also like move these like by itself as well and this wing right here can also move on a ball joint and these wings can spread out and this gun right here to activate it you just push it out makes it the active version moving on with articulation it is a limited on the head like you do get like a bit of forward backwards and side to side just a little bit and the model eye it does move side to side like just get a little push yep just like that moving on to the shoulder you can pull this out just for a forward shoulder movement it can go up this high well okay well due to design it could pop off easily but the shoulder pad can move up and down but let me just try that again okay there you go i did move it a bit higher and as you saw earlier, it is on a ball joint, so it does everything what a ball joint does. You do get a bicep rotation, double bend on the elbow, and a ball joint on the wrists. Moving on to the torso, you do get an ab crunch. It can also move back that far. You also get some side to side movement and a waist swivel. Moving on to the skirt, you get this middle front skirt can pop up and this front skirt right here can pop up as well. The side skirt can pop out just a tad bit, and as for the back skirt, well, it doesn't move. 
Okay, so moving on to the thighs now, if you look very closely, there is like a little swinging movement right here, which allows it to kick up just a little, just a little higher. My gosh, the design is so crazy. The leg can move out this far and it can only go that back this far. You also get thigh swivel, double bend on the knee. Moving on down, the ankle armor can move down and up ever so slightly and as for the foot it can go this far it can move back that far and it's a bit limited toe moves down always nice and as for the pivot yeah i gotta say it's not a bad pivot and of course you do get a rotation because it's on a ball joint moving on to the back this little thruster can move down and up well, the articulation on this kit is actually quite good though it is limited in some areas but you know, I can let that slide. You can still pull off some really nice poses. Moving on with size comparisons. Here it is right next to the standard size GM. And as you can see, the Delgado Minus is quite the big girl. And finally, here it is right next to the SD Ariel and Lego Batgirl. So that's gonna be it for the size comparisons. So let's move on to my final thoughts. And moving on to my final thoughts. Overall, it's a pretty fun kit. If you're a Gelgu fan, if you wanna see more pizzazz, this is right up your alley. Well, the only downside is is the uh, the big sticker sheet you saw earlier, which means you had to put some effort into you know make the kit look great. But here's the thing: even if you don't apply the stickers onto this kit, it still looks pretty good without it. And the one thing I should be maybe just a little bit concerned is that the uh, the shoulder joints like right over there, like it is plastic rubbing against plastic. Um, I mean, if it does uh wear out like over time that is an easy fix just apply just a tab bit of super glue but overall mine is still uh, pretty solid knock on wood what would be the cherry on top for this kit is that if it comes with the open palm hand for the left side but other than that i really do like this kit once again i do recommend you pick this cup you'll have as much fun as i did so that's going to be it for review. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe. Questions, concerns, comment down below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hey guys, hear me out. What if I bought this kit again and painted in Johnny Ridden's colors? Yay or nay?